Hello, and thanks for your interest today in our tutorial video on the 280,000 clean burn waste oil furnace. It comes with a swing out clean burn HS burner. They're simple, easy to maintain, they run great, the parts are readily available, and the parts are reasonable. Today we want to talk about five categories of things on the clean burn 280,000 furnace. The first category being components, the second being sequence of operation, the third being an operational video, the fourth being practical installation guidelines. Be sure you see your book for specifics, follow UL fire, electrical codes both local and national, and the fifth category being cleaning and periodic maintenance. Okay, here let's go. The first category being components. This here is the furnace junction strip. Power comes to here through your main power tail, comes in, goes a number of different places. This power goes down to run the pump on your tank. We put a purple tail on here. We call it the temporary input power tail. The orange tail goes out to run the pump. The next component would be the fan limit control right here. This is a temperature clock that turns the fan on and off and it's also an overheat switch. We have a fan limit video on our website. Uh, I think it's on the miscellaneous and specials page or there's another tab to click on it from the home page. A videos page clear at the bottom there's a link. This is the quick disconnect cord the button here turns the fan on. In the back of the unit here is typically a propeller fan, direct drive. That works for everything except ductable applications where you have duct work in your shop. In that case, you would need a squirrel cage fan back here. This is the flame controller. It works together with the electric eye, which is underneath this thing. right here this electric eye when this is shut it watches the flame down there all the time keeps the button from popping here as long as the flames burning the next item would be the combustion air blower motor and it's got a blower wheel in here that turns <clears throat> the next item would be the air adjustment band that opens and closes to let more or less air to the flame to keep it from smoking black, running rich or lean. Here's the air pressure regulator. Here's the air solenoid. That comes across the block here. Comes over here with air pressure to the air proof switch. Here's the transformer. 14,000 volt electronic Carlin transformer. The electrodes and retention heads up in there. I'll show you that in a minute. The oil preheater block sets in here. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Here's an exploded view of the burner. Here's the oil preheater block. Here's the temperature switch that sits on top of it. That runs the oil heater that heats the block here, the oil heater, a couple different applications here that goes in the in the block to heat the block so that when the cold oil comes in through this solenoid, the oil solenoid, it goes in through there and comes out hot. This is the nozzle assembly with the uh, the thing here to make the air spin, the turbulator, and then that also goes through the retention head here. This makes the air spin to get a good vortex to the flame. And the nozzle sets in front of here, which is this right here. Here's the air solenoid. This is a very simple little solenoid. It's got a plunger in there with a spring and an electromagnetic solenoid with an O-ring. Simple to clean. They work very well. Here's your electrodes. They go on the on front of here. 
Here's the electric eye I was talking about a minute ago. Got the 14,000 volt transformer there. The electric eye is is has a U-turn on it so that it keeps the electric eye back out of the 14,000 volts. This is the new style setup. Works very well. This electric eye cord here comes over to the flame controller to the F and F circuit to keep the button from popping as long as there's flame. If there's no flame, it pops a button and shuts it off. This circuit over here is the TNT, which is thermostat. That's where the wall thermostat hooks up. Jumper that and you get a flame. This is the low air proof switch here. When you have good air pressure, that switch closes and goes and starts the oil pump on the tank and sends oil up to the burner and that's what's, then you get a flame. Here's the burner combustion air blower motor and the squirrel cage and then here's your air band adjustment that rotates over the holes, opens and closes the holes. This is what your fan limit control looks like. There's a video of this on our website on the bottom of the home page. There's a link to click on for more videos. There's a fan limit control explains all that. The next category we want to talk about is the sequence of operation. That's the second category over here. When you turn your circuit breaker on, this power comes in, this orange temporary purple power tail here, comes to the junction strip, wise off, goes two different directions. The first leg goes down into the burner to the oil block heater switch, which goes to the oil uh, heater element there to keep the block warm 24-7. The other leg of the Y goes to this fan limit control up here and if the burner if the furnace is not overheated then it comes back and and goes down to the yellow cord red which powers the green light and the flame the flame controller here is as long as it's not overheated it will run be sure not to jumper or miswire those two circuits don't mix power and limit circuits now we're ready for a wall thermostat command. When that happens, the orange wire from the flame controller here sends power out of the flame controller to the junction strip here, which energizes the burner blower motor, the transformer, the oil solenoid, the low air pressure switch gets its power once uh, this here opens first. Once the air solenoid opens, that brings compressed air in here through the block, closes the air proof switch, and the air proof switch goes down on the pump with current and starts the oil pump and brings oil pressure up here, comes into the burner through the solenoid that for the oil that's already open through the hot heater block, and uh, that comes out the nozzle and, the, and you got a fire. Now, you do have to have this burner turned on for 15 minutes on the circuit breaker to get this whole heater block assembly here hot before you turn your wall thermostat on. This thing here needs to get hot to the touch. It takes about 15 minutes, it does automatically. Just turn the circuit breaker on and it will warm up. In 15 minutes, you're ready to turn the wall thermostat on. When this flame lights, the electric eye sees the light, sends the ohms back here to the F and F, keeps the uh, flame controller from popping the button. It'll, it'll run all day long, obedient to the thermostat command on the wall, and keep you comfortable all day. What a pleasant, a pleasant experience. 
This heater is safeguarded from overheating, low air pressure, flame out, plug nozzles, no oil, no light condition, running out of oil, etc. It will safely shut down, no problem. The third category we want to talk about is an operational video. We're going to start it up here. The flame size is adjusted set by the oil pressure. The air band here opens and closes to adjust the flame to keep it burning clean. And the air pressure here is adjusted to keep the oil going through the nozzle atomized, as atomized good so you have a nice clear flame. Here, let's open up and look at the flame. Nice, soft, gentle, rolling, white, yellow flame. Just a soft, gentle, rolling flame. Don't quite hit the target. Real nice flame. Look at it burn out the exhaust. Zero smoke. Nice, clean flame right out the exhaust. The exhaust is just perfectly clean. That will run about three to five minutes and then the fan comes on. Once the unit gets warmed up, this fan here will click on, start the burner, start the fan, and it's going to run about eight and a half amps on this unit here. Pulling eight and a half amps while it's running. Nice warm air. What a pleasant experience. Buy a heater from Central Ohio Heaters and get a nice warm shop. The fourth category we want to talk about today is practical installation guidelines. On top of the heater, you want to have three foot for fire safety, three foot all around the furnace in all directions so you can clean the furnace, service the burner, anything you need to do. It also needs to be eight foot up off of the ground for code. Also, do not store flammables in the area of the heater, such as gasoline, hay, cardboard boxes, etc., near the heater anywhere. Back here on the power cable, be sure you use sufficient size wire so it doesn't get hot. Be sure it's protected with the proper size circuit breaker. Don't mount the heater in the driveway where a semi can back through the shop and knock it off the ceiling. Don't laugh. It has happened. With the heater running, it's not funny. Fasten it to a shelf, a part shelf, or on top of something or maybe make a stand or mount it from the ceiling but don't overload your trusses especially in the center of the building use a ceiling support to keep the attic insulation back where it goes through the attic up inside the attic or if you just have lower insulation cut it back at least three inches be sure you use triple wall class a to go up through the ceiling uh, ul approved stack be sure your oil pressure line here goes uphill all the way from the pump up to the burner so it bleeds the air uphill. Don't go up against the ceiling and back down. Air won't bleed out right. Be sure to check with all local and national codes which may differ from this video before you hook it up. The fifth category is cleaning and periodic maintenance.
every 500 hours of operation or at least once a season you need to take the side of the furnace off here and clean out the ash There's a couple doors here to take off. This door here has a gasket on it to keep it from leaking. That gasket goes up against the side of the furnace here. Here's our clean out tool. These are very nice. We recommend these to keep the tubes clean here. We have seen these furnaces with the tubes almost completely full. This is to clean the tubes out. This end here is, it fits the rounded chamber to clean the chamber out. We also have a filter protector that goes over the filter in your shop vac. This is soft on the inside, it's spongy. With fine material on the outside, you vacuum up your ash, eventually it gets plugged up. When you shut your vacuum off, it expands, the ash drops off, your filter stays clean, you're ready to go again. Other maintenance includes checking the flame appearance in the hole here. Make sure it's burning good in here. Every week, check all your gauges, vacuum pressure, oil and air gauges. Make sure everything's running good. And be sure to check them after it's been running five minutes so that everything is stabilized. Drain the water out of the tank monthly, yearly. Check the burner for any problems, especially nozzle, retention head, electrodes, target, stack, stack system, etc. Central Ohio Heaters recommends getting a licensed professional to do this. You got the target over here. This is the target that sets in behind this in here. It bolts on the wall there. The flame shoots in here. They call that the flame retention disc. We make these out of heavy gauge metal. They work very well. They don't break. They don't deteriorate. They work very well. It goes in there. You can see the tip end of it. Central Ohio Heaters recommends getting a licensed professional to do a yearly maintenance and inspection. Be sure you turn the power off here. Disconnect this yellow power tail at the end of the season so that the preheater in the block doesn't heat the oil all summer in there and carbonize. You want that thing to be cold in the summertime, not hot. Then you'll be ready for a nice experience next year. Your, your furnace will be ready to go. Uh, be sure you clean out the box, the tubes, the stack system, and the rain cap at the end of the season for sure so it doesn't sit there and rust. If you're interested in a clean burn waste oil heater, any size, visit our clean burn page at centralohioheaters.com. There are lots of pictures to click on. They blow up for greater detail. Also see our videos. There's a link on the home page to our videos page. Click on the link on the bottom of the home page. There's great prices on heaters, components, burners, chambers, parts. We have truck line delivery available to your door on credit card. We have an eight page technical help. We have a 50 point safety inspection we do 
on all our furnaces to make sure they're safe and functioning properly. Come on over to centralohioheaters.com or give us a call 330-674-0142. Thanks for your interest today in our video.